Cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike came out with earnings after the market closed today and the stock market seems to like what it sees. So after growing a whole bunch and then seeing its stock fall recently, does this mean we've turned a corner? Let's spend the next 10 minutes finding out. My name is Brian Stoffel, and as of the time of this recording, I do own shares of CrowdStrike. So we'll dig into the companies. This is officially their fiscal fourth quarter that ended at the end of January. After the pop, it'll be about a $31 billion company. If we look at the top line, revenue grew 48%. This company is still growing very fast. That was ahead of Wall Street's estimates. That was ahead of management's guidance, um, which is great to see because part of the reason the stock fell last quarter was because management's guidance was below expectations. On the bottom line, there's a lot to like there as well on a non-GAAP basis, which excludes stock-based compensation, which we'll get to. Uh, earnings grew 43% year over year, which is ahead of, again, both Wall Street's estimate and management's guidance. Now let's take a look at margins. This was a mixed picture. On a non-GAAP basis, gross margin was actually down a little bit. We'll talk about that a little bit later because that also affected operating margins being down. Net margins were up due to some wonky things, but overall, it's still a very healthy number. Free cash flow increased markedly to $210 million. Net income on a non-GAAP basis was up and the balance sheet is in awesome shape overall. Uh, the, co uh, the company added 41% growth. They added customers to end the quarter at 23,000 customers that are using um, CrowdStrike for their cybersecurity needs, especially their endpoint solutions. That means your desktop, your laptop, your cell phones. Um, now, one thing that they do is they give the percentage of customers that are using five or more, six or more, or seven or more tools. I wanna take a second and just talk about why this metric is so important to me. Because one, it demonstrates a moat. The more customers that use this, the, the more data CrowdStrike has, which can help inoculate its existing customers against unique cyber attacks, and it has switching costs. So that's good from a defense, from the moat perspective. But from an offensive perspective, it means that CrowdStrike is coming up with more tools that customers actually buy and spend money on, which is the offense. This is the perfect melding of this offense and defense. So it was really heartening to see that the number of customers using five or more tools was up 53% year over year, and customers using six or more tools was up 62%. So Big customers continue to stick with it and use more tools. That is incredibly important. Now, the company on a non-GAAP basis continues to see operating leverage kick in. There wasn't as much of a kick from the last fiscal year to this fiscal year. That said, 16% operating margin on a non-GAAP basis. Um, I say non-GAAP like that because it excludes stock-based compensation and the company is still spending a lot on stock-based compensation, $152 million just during the quarter. So that's about a quarter of overall revenue, maybe a little bit less than that, but up significantly, up over 60% from last year. The nice thing about that, however, is, is that in terms of dilution, it's just 2.3%. I say just, but given that the top line is growing at almost 50%, it's something that I'm willing to deal with. Other investors aren't, you get to decide for yourself. In terms of retention, there was a slight downtick in gross retention and net retention. But look, overall, CrowdStrike is not only holding on to their customers, but is getting them to spend 25% more per year. That is awesome for every aspect of the business, and it still stays well above the 120% benchmark that they've set. Now, I haven't had a chance to listen to the conference call. I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. So all I know right at this point is that management is calling at a midpoint for revenue to grow 39%. That is ahead of Wall Street's expectations. And we know that this company usually down, under promises and over delivers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that number be higher. Earnings per share is expecting 61% growth versus 39% growth was a Wall Street estimate. This is becoming a little bit of an earnings play, but that again is on a non-GAAP basis. So take it with a grain of salt. For the full year, which is just beginning, management sees revenue growing 33%, which was ahead of Wall Street's estimates. They see the company pulling in $2.30 per share on a non-GAAP basis. That is well ahead of what Wall Street was expecting 
overall. So what should investors watch moving forward? That multi-product usage that I showed you and stopped the video for for a second, that is key. Second, attracting new customers. Third, subscription gross margins. Now, on a non-GAAP basis, just looking at subscription gross margins, we're actually down a little bit. I'm hoping that has to do with the fact that it's rolling out new products that haven't reached scale yet, but it could be a sign that the company is discounting its prices. We'll have to watch that moving forward and it's something to keep an eye on. And the last thing I'm gonna watch is free cash flow. The company's free cash flow margin for this quarter was over 30%. There's not much room for that to grow, but it's still a very healthy number. The moat is definitely widening and the thesis is very much on track for owning this company. If you run it through both Brian Froley's and my uh, checklist, it goes very well. It's in the green area for both of us. But what about valuation? Well, I'm gonna to get to valuation in a second, but I wanna let you know that next week, Brian Feroldi and I, for the first time, are launching a live cohort-based course focused on valuation. It's called Valuation Explained Simply. You can find out more by clicking in the show notes below. And if you use the code LASTCHANCE200 between now and next Monday, you can get $200 off the price of the course. But um, this course will cover uh, the valuation spectrum, avoiding common mistakes, and six different ways to value a company. It again, starts on March 14th and will be every Tuesday and Thursday, and we will also have office hours during the course as well. But when we look now back to CrowdStrike and we say, well, what stage of growth is the company in? I would say overall, it's in that hyper growth, self-funding phase for revenue growth. But in terms of free cash flow, it's actually in that operating leverage. We'll play the middle of those two and say it's in the self-funding stage, which means that it is optimized for gross profit. Pretty much everything else on a non-GAAP basis, it is not optimized for, but it is at least positive on a non-GAAP basis, which means we have some metrics we can look at, but not a ton. On a price to sales ratio, it's trading for about 14 times sales. That's high on an absolute basis low versus where the company has been in its short public life. In terms of gross profit, it's been growing rapidly after today, uh, $1.7 billion in non-GAAP gross profit. It's trading 18 times that. That's still very expensive. What about on a free cash flow basis? It was trading at about 49 times free cash flow after today, about 46 times free cash flow. We can also use a reverse discounted cash flow model with this. I put the discount rate at about 11% and the terminal growth rate at about 3%. And when I do that and I factor in the pop of taking it to about 131 to $133 per share, the implied growth rate here is about 20.5%. Is that reasonable? Is it not reasonable? Well, look, free cash flow margin is probably not gonna expand it too much more from where we're at. So basically what we're saying is, is can, CrowdStrike grow at about 20% over the next decade. That's a high bar, but it's a bar that's certainly possible. Is that an expensive price tag? Sure, but is it one that CrowdStrike could meet? I believe it could. Um, so that's just an idea about valuation. Again, valuation doesn't decide what stocks go in or out of my portfolio. Business quality and anti-fragility does. However, valuation can inform the size of my allocation. Um, so that is where CrowdStrike sits from a valuation standpoint. Again, want to remind folks, if you click in the show notes below, you can get use that last chance 200, get $200 off the course that starts next week. We're very much looking forward to that. So overall, CrowdStrike really had almost a perfect quarter. Those non-GAAP subscription gross margins are the only thing that worries me a little bit, but that's not a big deal at this point. Leave a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you think. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, we'll check back in on this one in about 90 days. Brian?